What is going on y'all? Check me out here and iOS 15, the beta, the public beta is out right now. Now I've already done a video where I shared the new features that are coming with iOS 15, but it was more like a quick overview. But if you haven't seen it, I'll link it below. But in today's video, what I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into that hands-on experience of how these apps look, work, all that good stuff. So enough of the intro. Let's talk. And this is ticket talking mother for the biggest that's a comma and a comma. Now one of the new things that's coming with iOS 15 is focus mode. And I love, love, love this because this is just one of those things that helps you have a more personalized experience of your phone. So what it does is basically allow you to create different profiles, so to speak, where you can have your own set of rules in which you define to allow specific notifications to come through from different people or different apps. And you even have the option for your friends to be notified when you're in focus mode and auto reply to them if they insist on messaging you anyway. Or like I said, you can choose specific people in which that particular focus mode doesn't apply to. So they can still have access to you at all times. But the cool thing here though, is that it works across all of your Apple devices. And this is one of those advantages of that Apple ecosystem where everything just works together effortlessly and seamlessly. But ultimately to access it, you're gonna swipe into your control center and choose the mode in which you want. Or you can create your own mode. So you can have like a gym mode or maybe a different mode for when you're in your car. You can just personalize it to you. Now I love the work mode setting because it helps eliminate distractions because I'm not always strong enough to do that on my own. <laughs> but personal mode is just as important, especially for my workaholics who struggle to turn that work mode off and find ourselves tapping into our email when we should be taking time for ourselves yeah just as you need that focus mode for work you need that focus mode to decompress now these different modes or profiles can automatically be triggered based off the time of day or location if you so choose but it doesn't stop at just allowing certain people and notifications into your phone you can also customize your home screen that you want to see per profile so you can make a certain layout for work so that your work apps are right there in your face helping you ignore non-work related notifications because maybe it's just me but one of the quickest and easiest ways for me to get distracted is to pick up my phone so if my phone is working with me to keep me focused you get where I'm going here. <laughs> but then when I'm off work, I can eliminate possibly tapping into my work email, but not even having the work email app on my home screen. But I can't emphasize enough how much I love this and the fact that it basically is activated across my devices. So I can't try to sneak from my phone to my computer to access something that I shouldn't be. I know I'm not alone there, don't y'all judge me. Now the second thing that I really like that's coming with iOS 15 are the features within FaceTime. One thing that I'm really excited about is grid view. This is gonna help you have a better layout when you're having you know, group FaceTime calls so that everything is nice and organized and your bubbles aren't floating all over the place. And I, I personally feel, and I said this in my recap video, I really feel like Apple paid attention to how we were using our phones or communicating with people when you know we were in quarantine because that alone really reinvented a lot of things that you know we kind of took for granted but something to pay attention to when you're having these group facetime calls is that the person's voice is now going to come from the direction in which they are on your screen which to me gives you more of a round table kind of feel so it does feel more conversational as if the person is right in front of you on the left side talking it should feel and sound like that a little bit more but another change with facetime and ios 15 is that you now have portrait mode to give you a blurred background you also have mic modes so that you can jump between standard isolating voices or wide spectrum which in short means you can have it set so that it really focuses on your voice and cancels out all the background noise or if you're somewhere and you want people for whatever reason to hear your background maybe like at a concert or something then you can choose a mode that accommodates that but another change coming with facetime is share play so the cool thing here is that this is going to let you watch a movie or listen to music with someone and the playback controls done within the app are synced in real time with the other person so if you scrub a track or rewind a movie that same action will be completed on your friend's end as well. Now, outside of your Apple apps, there are a few third-party apps that can take advantage of this, such as Disney, TikTok, HBO, and ESPN. But I would hope and love to see down the road the option to do this within YouTube because I think we consume just as much YouTube content as we do TikTok. Maybe that's just me. And it would also be cool to see Spotify and Pandora as well as, you know, one of the music streaming options. So, I don't know. This is my little 
two cent that nobody asked for. And the other thing that you can share is your actual phone screen, which is gonna be super clutch for so many different scenarios from shopping online with friends to maybe planning a trip with your friends or for troubleshooting someone's phone. Y'all know what I'm saying, what I'll say. But these new FaceTime features go beyond that because we also now have something known as FaceTime events, which now allows us to FaceTime Android devices or Windows devices by pretty much allowing you to schedule a future FaceTime call, which you can then share via a link. Now schedule FaceTime calls. I think personally, at least I'll speak on my behalf, this is, <laughs> pretty much something I do anyway, mentally. Like, I don't know, like how many of y'all out there feel you need to be asked to FaceTime versus, you know, those that just don't care? Like when that random FaceTime phone call comes in, does it feel to you like one of your friends or family just did a popcorn visit at your house? I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are on how you like to receive or not receive your FaceTime calls. I'm interested, I'm real curious. Let me know down below in the comment section. There's also some new widgets. So if you long press on your screen and then hit the plus symbol, the widgets that you'll see in here are in relation to contacts. So I can add a specific contact to my home screens. Let's say I'm gonna add this widget that has some of my contacts here and then I can hit done. And then if I were to tap on someone's name and it gives you more information that you have exchanged with that person or they have sent you. So all of that can be viewed in here. Now another change with iOS 15 is within the weather app. So it's just better overall. You have more details all around from those weather animations looking better onto the weather information that's provided being more detailed as well. Like here where it gives me a quick summary of the rainy conditions expected ahead with a statement and an illustration. Or when it's sunny out, you get sun rays or clouds when it's cloudy. And one thing I really love here is how they section everything off. So it makes it easier to follow and find what you need, giving it a cleaner look to quickly find the hourly forecast or the 10 day forecast. So overall, just like everything else, a better experience, a more enhanced experience. Now here's something pretty cool. If you come down here and tap in the bottom right, if you come in here to the top right and tap those three dots and tap notifications, you can then set which locations you would like to get notifications for in terms of when it rains or snows. You'll get an alert so you can be prepared. Now before we move into this next tip, I gotta give a huge thank you to Trade More for not only sponsoring this video, but also continuously supporting the channel. Cause if you've been following the channel, then you know I've worked with them in the past. And the thing that I like about them is that with technology constantly changing, Trade More helps make it easier with the upgrade or purchasing process by offering you the opportunity to buy our cell phones with them. So if you're in need of a new phone, they offer premium pre-owned devices, which is a great option to get a newer phone at a lower cost by going the refurbished route from a trusted source versus buying a phone off of someone which I know from personal experience is not always the best experience. Plus another advantage in buying a phone from Trademore is that they offer a money back guarantee to ensure that you're fully satisfied with your purchase. Now, if you're more interested in making a little bit of money versus spending it, I suggest exploring the trade-in option, which I'll link below for you in the description box. But ultimately what you can do is follow that link, choose a specific model that you wanna trade in, provide the device information, and then review the offer details. Now, if you're happy with the offer, it'll lock it in for a few days and you can provide your contact and shipping details to get the ball rolling. Now, I personally highly recommend an option like this to buy or sell because like I said earlier, I've definitely had my share of close calls where someone tried to get over on me. So it's a solution like this that offers peace of mind and a, I think, more stress-free buying or selling process. But for more information, check the link below. Let's get back to these tips. Safari, that even got, you know, some changes within the app. So one big change here for me is that the web address bar is now located at the bottom, which makes the search bar more reachable, but when you tap on it, it does jump to the top of the screen. So I don't know, I don't dislike it, but it, it, it is something to get adjusted to. You can also jump between tabs by swiping across. And I'm a fan of this new grid view that we have for the open tabs. It just looks better than the previous, what, carousel view that we had. I don't, I don't know if that's the correct term, but whatever view that was that we currently have, I don't like it as much as the view on iOS 15. For all of my people out there that are like me that have like tons and tons of tabs open, 
judge free zone don't judge us okay <laughs> we can now group those tabs by making tab groups so say for instance you got a bunch of open tabs that are related to business you can make a tab group called business and drop them in there so that you can clean up your view a little bit more or if you have a bunch of tabs open towards shopping make a group called shopping drop them in there just a better way to organize this clutter of information that we might have so another cool feature is that you can now rearrange your home screens. So if I were to press and hold down here and then tap those three dots, it's gonna allow me to now drag and drop my home screen where I want it to go. And I so needed this just a few days ago. So it's just, I don't know. I, <laughs> it's nice to see it in here now. And if I wanna get rid of a screen, then I can just hit the minus symbol now. And then you get a pop-up that just lets you know that your apps will now be available in your app library. So it's not deleting the apps is just deleting the home screen that you made with those apps. Now notifications, those are different as well. So they're separated better. Like I like how they're now grouped off. Like you now have something called notification summary, which, which gets low priority notifications and groups them together so you can kind of review them all at once. Now live text. I like it. The nice thing here is, is all done on device. So you don't have to connect to anything to get it going. But the way to get it going is to long press the text in an image within the photos app, which will then highlight the text in which it sees. Or you can press the icon on screen for it to highlight all of the text in which it detects. Now it does seem to be trying to catch up with Google Lens and provide more information in app for your images. But even though it's not as evolved as Google Lens, I love the fact that it's all done within the photos app. And it's definitely off to a good start. Now this next one is a small change, but still one to me that's important. And that's live tracking of your friend's location. So when you're sharing your location with someone via messages, you're able to see where they are on the map as they move. But currently the limitation here is that it refreshes their location like every 30 seconds or so. However, with iOS 15, it will be immediate. So you can actually see them moving on the map. Now the thing to know here is that both devices will need iOS 15 in order for this to work. Voice memos, just a few changes here, but one that I really like is the option to tap the share button to access your playback speed. So you can adjust that to speed it up or slow it down as necessary. This is a test, just getting an audio test so that we can have some audio to play with for this. So testing, 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 testing. Or you can enable the option for it to skip the silent portion within the voice memo. And the other thing that's different here is that you have a cleaner menu layout within the share menu. All right, now this one y'all, Apple Maps. I'm a Google Maps user, okay? I've tried Apple Maps every time that it gets updated, thinking that it might be the, you know, it might now have the one missing element to make me switch. But uh, it just never quite pans out. So I always end up going back to Google Maps. But I gotta say, y'all, this, this time might hit a little different because I'm really feeling the changes with Apple Maps. So a couple of things here, you have more detailed coverage in terms of what you see of the area in which you're looking at in the map. Also just navigating within the app seems more natural and more intuitive, like things are not tucked away as much and they seem to be better grouped together, which is gonna leave you less places that you have to kind of explore to find what you need. Or when you're on the main page within your Maps app and you tap on your profile picture, it will allow you to quickly access a few items like your favorites or your preferences, which were a little bit harder to me at least to find before and there's also more map options so now you have a driving map to help you see a color representation of the traffic flow around you there's also quicker access to your menu of options when you're viewing a specific location by tapping the three dots but the one thing that I love here is the option to see the estimated time that it would take to reach a location based upon the time you want to leave or arrive by now this is a feature that I've used in Google Maps you know online on their website so I'm super excited to see it now within the Maps app on my phone. Loving this new way to save a bulk load of photos or videos without having to long press them to do so. So for one, you have an icon to the right of them. But if someone were to send you, you know, a series of photos or videos, messages will now group them together so you can tap to expand it to see it. And this gives things a cleaner view, not only within, you know, your conversation thread, but also when you want to just focus on the images or videos that were sent to you. And on top of that, it's easier to save them all with the download button in the bottom right, 
and just as easy to share them. But when you're in this view, you don't lose the option to reply or tap back to individual pics or videos. You still can. But overall, things are looking really good with iOS 15 and these aren't even all of the changes and who knows what that final version will look like, what new things might be there and all of that good stuff. But I will say thus far, I like what I see and I know it's probably gonna be that much better of an experience with iOS 15 on the new iPhones whenever they're you know revealed. But that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I'm gonna throw some more videos on screen in case you wanna binge on some more of my content. I'm gonna stick around for a little bit after the video and chat with you down below in that comment section. Let me know your thoughts of iOS 15. Like what is a feature that's coming with iOS 15 that you're most excited about having? Mine's definitely right now is FaceTime and focus mode. So yeah, anyway. Before I ramble some more, I'm gonna get out of here, y'all. As always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.